So in this problem we're working with a polar curves, a simple one, r equals 2, and then a more complicated one, r equals 3 plus 2 cos theta. It's really that second one that we're going to work on for most of the problem. And we're going to have to find an area, and we're going to have to interpret, we're going to have to both find um, dr dt, and dy dt and interpret the motion of that component, the r component and the y component. And so I think the information that is going to be useful here is uh, simply how we represent x and y when we're working uh, from uh, polar coordinates and also how we calculate areas when we're working with polar curves. So let's start with part A. We have to find this blue region. Now, there's more than one way to handle this calculation, but taking some time to think about it at the start can save you a lot of grief. And the thing that I found the simplest was to say, this really, this blue area separates into two. These vertical lines are really just some fraction of a circle. That's kind of the outer blue here. And then this inner blue, which I've done in a crosshatched fashion, that's really the only one that involves this r equals 3 plus 2 cos theta. So if we can simply find the area due outside of this arc between 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, and then separately deal with the area inside this arc, then this problem becomes much simpler. What about the area outside that arc? Well, if you go from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, that's an arc length in the unit circle of uh, 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 radians. That's one third of the circle. So that means that these uh, vertical lines, I, I apologize, I called them horizontal, these are vertical lines. This area is two thirds of a circle of radius 2. And so what we first have is two-thirds of a circle of radius 2. And a circle of radius 2, of course, is going to have uh, an area of um, pi r squared with r equal to 2, so that's going to be 4 pi, so we're going to take two-thirds of that. Then all that's left is an integral involving this second r function, 3 plus 2 cos theta, and that's going to be an integral from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, and the function we're integrating, the area function, is 1 half r squared d theta, where r is 3 plus 2 cos theta. This we have to evaluate numerically. Or, to put it a different way, we're allowed to evaluate this numerically, so why bother with trying to do it analytically? So we'll get an approximate answer. Okay. And so that result is approximately equal to, so let's just say area equals that, and so the area is approximately equal to uh, 4 pi, 2 thirds of that, that's going to be 8 pi over 3. And then we're going to evaluate this integral, as I said, numerically. So I've gone ahead and put um, that r function into y1. We're going to use it more than once here, so we may as well put it in just once and then manipulate the y1 variable, so to speak. So what we have to do is we're going to do an integral. So we need to go into the catalog or however you get to the integral function. And okay, so what sort of integral is this? 
Well, it's an integral that starts at 2 pi over 3. And be sure to use pi itself when you're working with this because you wouldn't want to get the wrong answer just because you were off by um, the third decimal point. So we're going to go from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. And what is our function? Our function is 1 half times uh, y1 squared quantity needs to be squared and we're working with respect to x okay. to that we're going to add what did we say uh, 8 pi over 3 that all together we get 10.3704 all right now part B well what they tell us is a particle is moving along this path so now we're parametrizing it as some function of T but what we say is that dr dt equals dr d theta. So theta and t are changing in lockstep. How r varies with them is uh, one works just as well as the other, the, the t or the theta. And so now we're trying to find dr dt at theta equals pi over 3. So I'm going to just say given this interesting association, okay, we have dr dt at theta equals pi over 3 equals uh, dr d theta. at theta equals pi over 3. Well, dr d theta I can calculate. Okay? What's the derivative of this with respect to theta? It's just um, negative 2 sine theta at theta equals pi over 3. And what have we got? Um, the um, sine of pi over 3 is just uh, root 3 over 2 so multiply that by 2 we're just going to get root 3 multiply negative we get negative root 3 or we could have just done this in the calculator to get an approximate value of negative 1.732 Now, what does it mean? Well, dr dt being negative tells us that the function is that the uh, length of r is getting shorter. And since r was positive, we're just going to say at um, theta equals pi over 3, dr dt is less than zero and therefore um, the particle is moving towards the origin. That's all we need to do for the interpretation. Okay, let's take a look at part C. We have a similar situation, but here they're saying that dy dt is the same as dy d theta. Again, what that suggests is that theta and t are moving in lockstep. 
so you know you're you're basically going around radially at um, pi radians per second or whatever and so finding dy dt at theta equals pi over 3 so dy dt theta equals pi over 3 is the same as finding dy d theta at theta equals pi over 3 now what do we know about y? Well y is r of theta sine theta so we're just taking the derivative with respect to theta of of what? of r of theta 3 plus 2 cos theta times what? times sine of theta and for this one, again, since we are using a graphing calculator uh, for the problem, why not just use the inderiv function on our calculator to do this? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply y1 times sine and then use inderiv to evaluate this at theta equals pi over 3. Okay. Again, I could do it. Uh, without the calculator, but why bother? So, remembering what that y1 is our function, um, r is a function of theta, I'll just uh, invoke the inderiv function from the catalog. There it is. And we're working with respect to x theta really but we're just using x because we're not working in polar mode on the calculator and what did we say that was it's going to be y1 times sine of theta and where are we evaluating it they asked us to evaluate it at pi over 3. Looks like 0.5. <clears throat> we probably could have done this analytically, as I said, and gotten exactly one half, but no need to. We're just going to write it out as 0 0.5000. zero zero zero. y dt at theta equals pi over 3 is approximately equal to 0 0.5 0, 0, 0. let's make sure we got our sign right yeah we did okay so what does that mean well that just means that the y component is moving down and where are we at pi over 3? Well, we're up here. So we're moving closer to the x-axis. Particle is moving towards... I'm sorry, what did we just say? We said this was positive, so it means that the particle is moving away from the x-axis. That's all we have.